one of the two viruses that we can consider for our projects is influenza. So the inter influenza virus roughly looks like this as a schematic diagram. They're not actually that often uh, spherical. They're more long, likely to be elongated. But you get the general picture. There's an outer uh, shell containing hemagglutinin and, and neuraminidase uh, molecules, which the neuraminidases are in red and the hemagglutinins are in blue. Then there's a lipid bilayer layer which is taken from the host cell. So this will be taken from the animal which it was last infected with. And this contains M2 ion channel proteins within that lipid bilayer. And internally, you've got uh, the RNA and the RNA proteins, the nuclear proteins. Hemagglutinin and neuraminidase are the two most important proteins in uh, the virus in terms of recognizing host cells and invading host cells. There are three types of influenza virus, A, B, and C. We're going to focus on A because it has a complicated uh, structure and evolution uh, and its segmentation means that it evolves rapidly and it can move between hosts the most likely to cause serious and pathogenic diseases uh, in humans, although we also get B as well. And vaccines commonly work against A and B. The complexity makes it hard to vaccinate against and control, particularly the A virus. It's divided into many different subtypes that infect different hosts and have different levels of pathogenicity. Genome is broken into eight segments. There are the two glycoproteins, which are the outer coat of the virus, hemagglutinin and neuraminidase, HA and NA. There are three segments that make up the viral polymerase gene. This is really important to the virus because otherwise it cannot uh, replicate within cells. It needs to provide an RNA polymerase to your cells to hijack them into creating new copies of itself. So it has segments which are PA, polymerase A, PB1 and PB2. And there's a frame shift variant of the PB1 gene, which produces a cell death inducing protein. Then the other internal proteins that are not expressed on the outside of the virus are uh, the nuclear protein. There's the matrix proteins, which I've talked about, the M2 protein, which is an ion channel that does go through the lipid bilayer. And there's also an M1 matrix protein as well. There are two non-structural proteins, they're not involved in the shape or structure of the virus, that there's a bit of argument as to what they actually do and uh, how they're expressed. So they're called NS1 for non-structural protein 1 and NEP. The RNA genome in total contains 13.5 kilobases. The hemagglutinin, one of the viral coat proteins and is required for cell entry. It recognizes surface cell receptors, which is sialic acid uh, receptors. It fuses with the cell membrane. So first you do recognition, recognize the sialic acid that pulls the vir virion, the single vir virus capsid, onto the surface of a cell, then the two lipid bilayers fuse with one another, and then the material from inside uh, the vir virion, the virus particle, can enter into the cell. Neuraminidase is a sialidase, so it cuts the bonds between sialic acid and uh, the hemagglutinin. So this allows the virus to be mobile and move around. So for example, if it, a virus docks on a cell where there's a lot of mucus around and it can't get a good fix, or it's not able to uh, fuse the membrane properly and enter into the cell, then it needs to use the neuraminidase to cut itself free and try again. This also is important for releasing the virions from the outside of the cells. So as the new virus buds out of the cell, it will bind itself through the hemagglutinins into any sialidase uh, receptor, sialic acids that happen to be around. So you need to have the neuraminidase to free the virus particles to go to other cells. 
if you affect this, you affect forest mobility, though you don't affect the ability to get into cells. So it can get in, but it can't get out and float around effectively. So here's a schematic diagram of a fluviral particle, a virion, uh, binding to the sialic acid receptor. You can see the lipid bilayer underneath. There's one as well, which is the thing that looks a bit like a cauliflower underneath the hemagglutinin and neuraminidase proteins on the surface of the virus.